Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Slay the Princess, which, based off of the timing of the previous episode, this should hopefully be the last episode. I know I keep saying this so many times, but I, I, be, I, I, I can't always predict how long this is going to take, because sometimes there's more information than I've really seen. So... Obviously, important viewer discretion is advised because of blood, gore, and other viewer sensitive things. Yada yada yada. But the important thing to remember is that this is love, love story. There's no premature endings, no anything like that. This is just a love story. So, now that we got that out of the way, there's two last things which I previously talked about before seeing other parts of the prisoner ending and doing the damn soldier chapter 3 ending which I will be skipping over plenty of the text to try and get to the points that we haven't seen before so let's just get right into it shall we I will be focusing on the prisoner ending first just because we've done that before but I don't actually have a save tour because I don't think at least uh, do I have I don't remember what that was yeah that was yeah that was the auto saves uh, yeah it doesn't look like we have any of those so let's just skip through everything cause uh you're on a path yada yada so and then just head to the cabin you make your way Proceed to the cabin. The interior. So we do need to take the blade. You take the blade from the table. Into the basement. The uh, continue down the stairs. Good. You're still listening to reason. Yeah, do, do not slay the princess first. Drop the plate and keep talking to. Drop other things. I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife? So, drop it. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands. You. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. Let's see here. So, we just have to keep talking to her. Yeah, it's pretty awkward. I know. Um, you're supposed to. Don't world. just tell her that. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Oh yeah, she said. I think that's what. Right. He threw, is that why you think they threw me down here? I don't want her. Around. I like the world. I think. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? No, but I'm sure they keep the ha have their reasons for keeping the information secret from me. Thanks for the vote of confidence. What if they're bad reasons, though? If they had good reasons for thinking I was dangerous, wouldn't they have shared them with you? I don't want to hurt anyone. I just want to leave. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me? Yad, what's your name? She hesitated. How long have you been down here? How would I get you out of here? You can't. Okay, we talked enough. Oh. Have you decided what- Examine the chains. Oh, you have- uh, I'm gonna check upstairs. I'll be here. Return to the bottom of the stairs. You uh. See here. I guess- Save her? Against your- Let's approach locked no. door. We so warn Stop her. that. Resist. The blade. Proceed to the cabin. A warning. 
Oopsie to the cabin. The interior. And then take the blade. You take the blade from. Good idea. Much better to be. Then enter the basement. The door to the basement. I'll sit with her. You step toward. Sit where you're told to sit. You do as she asks and sit on the floor. Let's see here. What would you have me do? Let me borrow that knife. Don't worry, you'll get it back. That's ominous, but she seems confident. Whatever it is she has planned, I think she knows what she's doing. Oh, please, she's just putting on an act to disarm you. That much should be obvious. In case you need to hear a voice of reason, it would obviously be unwise to give away your only weapon. Though if she isn't bluffing, whatever she has planned might be for her benefit alone. There's no guarantee that what's good for her is good for us. So, what should we do? I don't know. I'm just spelling out our options, listing the pros and cons. Then let me help you. I'll start with the cons. If you're handing her your weapon, the cons are that she might use it to escape and end the entire world, and she might use it to kill you. That doesn't sound great. What about the pros? There are none. The pros are that we can't trust him, possibly even more than we can't trust her. And whatever she has planned could do something to mess with what he has planned. Or maybe they're both screwing us over in their own ways. So, yeah. yeah. So... Okay, I'm trusting you. Give her the knife. Slide it over. No, absolutely not. I am not letting you hand your only weapon over to the world-ending princess. Until you come up with any other idea, like, say, I don't know, doing your job and slaying her, you remain rigidly in place. Do you think this will work? Interesting that you're only having us remain in place. It's almost like there are very real limits to your power. I don't know what you're talking about. The world ends if we fail, right? Her killing us might not be our only failure state, if you catch my meaning. I don't know where you're going with this. Could you explain? Yes, explain it. Sure. I'm insinuating that we could kill ourselves, Ruin this whole thing. You wouldn't. I'm not afraid of dying. Are you? A little. You got your point across. Fine. <sighs> you slide the blade across the floor. The princess maintains unsettling eye contact as she reaches down to pick it up. Now, the very next few scenes is going to be quite grotesque. So, I just viewer. Be war viewers be warned. Thanks. She pulls up her hair, yeah. smiling slightly, as she raises the blade to her throat. I, I think those of you that might know might know where this is going. This sh yeah. What is she doing? She doesn't say another word as she cuts into her own neck. No. You close your eyes, but that doesn't stop you from hearing every grisly detail. The splitting of skin, the wet mulching of severed veins, the grinding of metal against bone. I'll be damned. She's actually doing your job for you. Why would she do that? Huh. So that's her play. Killing herself? We don't know that she's dead yet. We're not even watching it happen. She could just be faking those sounds. And then, finally, you hear a snap and an uneasy silence. There is a slow and fleshy tear. Hard to fake that. This is worse than watching, <laughs> and yet our eyes are still closed. Finally, there's the soft thud of something roughly head-sized bouncing against the floor, and the clattering of chains as they drop along with it. I think you can open your eyes now. Ugh. Oh no, oh no, Ugh. oh no, what did we do? Can, can we put it back? Please tell me we can put it back. The princess's eyes stare up at you, dead. Congratulations! 
You saved the world. Are you sure she's not winking at us? Obviously not. She is thoroughly deceased. I hate this. Can we just get out of here now, please? Of course, the princess is slain and the world is saved. Whenever you're ready, you can proceed to your reward. We should take her with us, don't you think? What? No, you shouldn't do that. Why would you do that? I can think of lots of reasons. A trophy, proof of our victory. Hell, we could even give her a proper burial. She did save the world, <laughs> right? You don't need proof, you don't need a trophy, and she doesn't deserve a burial. Just leave. Even after all that, you're still not satisfied, are you? Something is still motivating you to keep things the way you want them. I'm just eager to put this all behind us and give you your reward. Stop reading into things, the danger has passed. You can relax. I'm just keeping myself sharp. I'm not so eager to put my guard down. I am. I'm on team, let's put this all behind us, so can we leave already? Take the princess with you. Ugh, fine. You pick up the princess's severed head, its neck stump still oozing bodily fluids. Then make your way back upstairs to the first floor of the cabin. Did you see that? I could have sworn she moved. She did. She didn't. She's dead. But what if she's not? Are you listening to yourself? Do I need to explain to you why decapitation is lethal? The door to your bountiful reward is right in front of you. All you have to do is open it. Leave the luck cabin and claim your reward. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is... Wait, no, that's not right. Well played. For you, prisoner. This, this is the end of the world, isn't it? I always thought I'd at least have time to explain myself before I had to watch it happen, but it's already... Over? Is he gone? But we're still here. Maybe it wasn't the end of the world after all. Maybe it was just the end of his. Thanks for carrying me up here. I had to take it on faith that you would know what to do. I'm glad I was right to trust you. So, this is the outside. Maybe it's just my lack of body, but it's colder than I expected. So, you don't get your chance to spawn some blue taking her and left or something. Like She's this. gone. So, main menu. So that was at least sort of the main way to go about the prison running. Obviously, every thing is valid, but that's just another variation of it. And the last is the damsel and well, the damsel to the chapter 3 ending, because we got the damsel ending, but we didn't get the chapter 3 ending. So, let's get into that right now. Shall we? Your honor p Yeah, so silently continue to the ending. You make your way up Proceed to the cabin. The interior. So, do not pick up the blade. The door to the. Continue down the Good. stairs. You're still. Slip into the chains. You're only ma maybe. I'm gonna go okay. check to see if there's something around. Turn down the stairs. You make your way to the bottom. Uh, save the. <sighs> Fine. Approach the door. No, we won't have any of that. The st so warn her. Stop that. Resist. The blade. Move the. So it proceeds to the cabin. A warning. Proceeds to the cabin. The interior. So. Yeah, so. Take the blade. You take the blade from the. I suppose if. Hopefully it does. There's no use arguing over motivate. Uh, enter the basement. And then choose to rescue. 
rescue the princess. Rescue her? What are you talking about? Did you forget that she's a world-ending monstrosity? And even if you wanted to unleash her onto the world, despite the complete moral disaster that would be, you'd have to get her out of those chains. Good luck with that. Don't you see how dainty her hands are? We'll be able to slip her out with ease. No, she's a prisoner here. You can't just slip her hand through the chains. If her hand could just slip out of the chains, why hasn't she done it already? Because we've yet to present her with her freedom. I'm not sure I follow. Would you rather believe me, a passionate heart guided by love and my own good nature, or would you rather believe the devil on your shoulder who tells you what you can and cannot do? I think I'd rather believe in facts. Ah, so you're one of those empiricists. One of us has to be. Then let me show you- No. I can't. Not on my watch, villain. Is that a th you know you're going to re What do we do now? That sounds perfect. As the prince- We have each other. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Let's- That's the way out. Okay, so... Quick load. Oh. Let me quickly end this and get this back up to where I was before. Okay, I'm back to the chapter two after doing the steps to get into the damsel chapter again, so I am just gonna quickly get to the different choices. So, take the blade, enter the basement. So... Yeah, so we, we have to choose to slay the princess whenever the option comes up to reach this chapter. Lay the hand, you run the princess down. Wait, no! You barbarian, what do you think you're doing? But you ignore the pleas of the foolish little voice and press on. The princess's eyes grow wide with terror as you approach, but she does absolutely nothing to stop you. Your blade pierces her heart and she collapses pathetically to the ground. I'm sorry, did I do something wrong? No, my love, you did nothing wrong, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not you! I'm going to die now, I think that's what you want. Good and just like that, she's dead! Say it and in the world sense. is saved. Thank you for seeing this through, I know it must have been difficult. Oh, I feel sick. Sick? You took part in the murder of the fairest creature that's ever lived. And you merely feel sick. I, for one, am absolutely distraught, grief-stricken, inconsolable. You'll get over it. You just saved everyone. Get over it? You smarmy ass. There's nothing in the world worth getting over it for. We might as well just end it all. You raise the blade, aiming the point directly towards your hut. Excuse me? No, you absolutely do not do that. Yeah, let's not make any rash decisions. We should give ourselves a minute, take a deep breath, and... Rash. The only rash decision we've made was running our cursed blade through her heart. This is far from rash. This is measured. This is the only thing left for us to do now that she's gone. <sighs> I'm the one who makes decisions here and I say no. Exactly. You're not doing this. All of you may have previously thought that my passions were too great to stifle, but those were merely passions of joy. My passions of sorrow run deeper than the ocean itself, and you'll find that they are far more unstifleable. Haven't you? Haven't you all? I don't believe this. What? What don't you believe? You plunge the blade into your own heart and... Collapse to the floor. You can't be serious. Why are you helping him? I'm not. He just made it happen. I'm sorry. That's right. You're all sorry. Everything goes dark, and you die. The Grey. You're on a path in the woods. You horrid monster. Do you think just because we've returned to the woods you've earned my forgiveness? 
Our beloved had best be alive and well when we return to the cabin, or you'll never know the end of my wrath. She won't be alive and well when we return to that cabin, because she's dead. We killed her. You killed her, and so I killed you. And you clearly didn't do a good enough job. I'm still here. Oh, and I'm still here too. If you lot get to be blessed with seemingly eternal life, that must mean she's still there, waiting for us to throw ourselves at her feet in remorse. I doubt it. I think I'm better at killing than you are. So you've been here before. Of course you've been here before. What count is it this time? Two? It's our third. What gave it away? Your open discussions. I couldn't care less what he knows. Every second we stand around arguing in the woods is a second that I'm anxiously worrying about her. Take us to the cabin and take us there now. With each passing moment, our relationship may be damaged even further, though I fear the rift between us may already be permanent. And if it is permanent, then what? You'll kill us again. Oh, you just wait and see. My vengeance will echo the depths of my bereavement. Don't provoke him. I'd prefer if we didn't die again. I'm not fond of dying. Why not? You've already done it twice. It was unpleasant. It was only unpleasant because you think it's supposed to be unpleasant. I'll make you feel what I feel if it's the last thing I do. And mark my words, you won't like it when it happens. Oh. How exciting. I'd love to see you try. Why, of course, Cold. I agree. Can I- Well, I'm not just going to try. I'm going to actually do it. Uh-huh, yeah, sure. So. I'm looking forward to it. Good. I am too. Can I talk now? Yes, I can. Great. Now that you're listening, let me remind you that if you're here in the woods, it means that the princess is not dead, and that her very existence well, currently poses a direct threat to the entire world. We're not exactly in the woods. I'm in charge here, and if you slay her again, you're not going to make us kill ourselves. Exactly. Oh, it's clear, you murderer. Though I should remind you that you're not as in charge as you seem to think you are. I'm sure his outburst last time was just a fluke. I wouldn't worry about him. Besides, if he kills us again, he kills us again. It doesn't matter. He'll tire out eventually. Hopefully. The flame of passion always burns out in the end. <laughs> Does it though? Spoken like a true cynic. Enough bickering. Just stay focused and get to the cabin. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? She'll find a way out eventually and the world will still end. The only way this resolves is if you find her and slay her before that happens. Again he makes her out to be a monster. I'm tired of all this slander. She's never hurt anyone in her life except for us. And that was our fault. We don't know that. She could have done all sorts of things we weren't around to see. Turn around and leave. Go to the cabin. I'm fine with either. So long as we don't just do the same thing again. We haven't talked about how different this place is. It wasn't like... It, it wasn't different. If this now. isn't the same path in the woods you're used to, that means that her influence is already spreading and you're running out of time. Wait. But if her influence is spreading, that means there's hope. That means our beloved is waiting up there for us, ready to make amends. Yes, I already told you that she's alive. Don't mind him. I don't think he's doing too well. I'm doing better than any of you. I'm doing great. She's alive. Influence doesn't require life. But if things restarted, why wouldn't she be alive? Who said they restarted? All they've done is changed. I shan't listen to the vile mutterings of you serpents. Onward! Our living, breathing princess awaits us. Cabin. I'm sure you've already heard my words of warning in one of your past lives. You've already managed to slay her once, just 
don't muck it up this time, all right? Oh, we'll muck it up all right. We'll get our happy ending, even if it damns each and every person who's ever lived. Uh, whatever you do, don't let him influence a single decision. He's clearly lost it. I hate that I'm agreeing with him on anything, but I really don't like being at the whims of someone so... unstable. It's stressful. Yes, having all those feelings isn't very productive, is it? But we're just passengers here. Why stress over something you can't control? You're saying that like stress is just something you can turn off. It is. It's easy. Whatever happens, happens. This is horribly unproductive. The cabin and your extremely important destiny await. Proceed to the cabin. The interior of the cabin oh. feels dry and brittle. Ancient dust-covered wooden beams hold up a crumbling ceiling like mummified ribs, each elegantly carved detail of the stately building preserved in an extended stasis. Everything here has been kept safe and dry and lifeless. Why is she in the corner? But you're not alone. You can feel something watching you. There is a figure faintly outlined against the dusty wood of the far wall. Is that... Her? Our beloved. So she does live. She doesn't look very alive to me. Before you can make a move, the figure is gone, vanishing behind the door on the far side of the room. The door at the end of the room? But there isn't a door. There's a mirror, that's it. The mirror? Is this some kind of joke? Did you all plan this out before dying? There is no mirror. There's the door to the basement, the table, and the pristine blade. Huh. Maybe it's gone because we've already killed her with it. Uh, no, that's right. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Perhaps it's gone because an oh-so-deserved guilt has started to worm its way into each and every one of you. Perhaps all of you do feel just as bad as I about what we've done. Though if you felt the oppressive guilt, I feel we would have manifested that weapon directly into our heart. I suppose it doesn't matter why the blade is gone, but you're going to have to find it if you're going to do this right. So why don't you march over to that door and make your way down to the basement? Approach the mirror. You make your way to the door at the end of the room, stopping just in front of it. You must think you're looking at that mirror you mentioned earlier, the one that doesn't exist. Just reach forward and open the door. It's so hazy. We should try and clean it off. It's time for all of you to see what we've become. You reach forward and place your hand on the door to the basement. The handle is just a little to your right, and a little down. So much for our reflection. We didn't need to see ourselves anyway. I'm much more interested in seeing other things. I see. We are too hideous for <laughs> even a mirror to behold. We can only hope she might still see some good in us. No way left to go but down. Into the basement. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing an antique staircase lit by weak torchlight. The air here is so stale it practically stands still as if the very molecules of this place have been fossilized, trapped for eons until your arrival. Even the blaze of the torches can't penetrate the odorless air, as if they'd run out of fuel to burn ages ago, their light still flickering more out of habit than from adhering to a physical reality. A wispy figure watches you from the bottom of the stairs, face veiled in shadow. There she is again! My love! She's just an old memory. Your eyes lock for a brief moment, then she vanishes around the corner. I'm sorry about last time, are we good? You receive no response. Do you think she's upset with us? I don't like being here unarmed after what happened last time, I feel so... exposed. Of course she's livid, and with good reason. You aren't helping. Are you scared of a little ghost? What's she going to do? Look at us until we feel bad? <laughs> she can look all she wants. It won't do anything. Cold has the point. 
sit downstairs. As you descend the final step, the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, her wrist still bound to the wall by a heavy chain. This cell is a dark and isolated place, with not so much as a window to allow starlight to penetrate the gloom. See? She's dead. No! What foul trickery is this? How can this be? We just saw her alive and well a moment ago, floating away transparently. Whatever we saw was a ghost. I thought we were all on the same page. Do try to keep up. Your thoughts are interrupted by the sound of a slamming door and a clicking lock. You turn to see the shade of the princess staring down at you from the top of the stairs, clutching a brightly burning torch. So that's where the blade is. It's already in her heart. And yet she isn't dead. She is dead. Have you never heard of a ghost before? Oh, for the love of... Can we not waste time arguing over the semantics of what is and isn't dead? She is clearly conscious. She clearly just slammed the door on you, and she clearly has a weapon. Your pristine blade sticking out of her chest. This is extremely bad. Catastrophic, even. Yet, yeah, dead or not, what are we supposed to do about her? Slaying or destroying, if we want to be a little more death neutral, seems off the table. We make amends. She obviously still holds us in her heart. She's bearing a torch for us and everything. But she hasn't said anything. Are you sure she can talk like this? You came back. I missed you. That angelic voice. I missed you too, my beloved. You sure snapped back to your old self quick. Yes. Seeing her dazzling countenance again has reignited the warmth in my heart. I have found it in me to forgive the sins this body has committed. We can have our perfect romance after all. This is a bad place. We're, We're supposed to be together, but it keeps making us hurt each other. The torch falls from the princess's hand and bounces down the stairs. It'll be so much better when it's gone. The skeletal wood of the basement perfectly dry after uncountable years of desiccation, immediately catches fire. She's trying to kill us. A misplaced escalation of her passions, but clearly she still cares for us. I say we burn with her. I'm going to burn. It's okay. I'm going to burn too. And then we won't hurt anymore. She's right about the last part. Burning doesn't hurt forever. One of my greatest fears is being burned alive. The fire like grows a... quickly, devouring the basement, dancing up the walls and painting every surface with strokes of flame. You're choked by smoke, and the air around you grows uncomfortably warm. We've never burned to death before. I wonder how it's going to feel. Bad! I bet it'll feel really, really bad! Yeah, it's... I mean, like... Once your nerves burn off, you're not going to feel anything, but still, ugh. Yes, it will be terrible, so you'd better come up with something to do, and fast. Your personal safety is far from the only thing she's threatening right now. I think a bit of fiery passion is good for the world. You're just trying to spoil her fun. I'm not spoiling anything. I'm trying to prevent oblivion. Push to the door. As you rush up the stairs, the entire cabin erupts into a raging inferno. You ignore the princess, throwing yourself headlong against the door, bashing at it with your clenched fists in a vain attempt at freedom. It's no use. You're stuck here. Your skin starts to bubble. As layers of you peel away into raw, seeping burns, you feel a hand on yours. You turn to see the princess, face bright and smile wide with manic affection. She clutches you close to her I chest, love haircut, watching like, with loving uh, eyes as the flames eat you away, bit by bit. The pain uh, is unbearable at first. Every inch of you screams as your flesh is stripped away, your muscles stiffening as they're cooked, your blood boiling in your veins. 
but it isn't long before the flames take your nerves, and with them, your ability to feel much of anything. See? That wasn't so bad. It was so bad. But somehow, the nothing is so much worse. You'll get used to it. There are still the feelings of the heart. Those never go away. Oh, they always do in the end. You just haven't experienced enough. Eventually, you'll want them I just to stop don't like too. Stuff on the screen. <laughs> you'll make them stop. The princess's smile never fades. Her skin peels away, and then her muscle, until all you can see is her charring skull locked in an eternal grin. It's very Private romantic, really. Spirit. We got our happy ending after all. We can die happy. Thank you for taking that away. I don't like the image of the head. <laughs> but despite your best efforts, you do not die and she's gone. Something is taken her away and left something else in her place. She's gone? Where did she go? And that is the end. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. And may the stars forever guide your path, forever might lead you into the future. Goodbye everybody. Hope to see you next time on another one of my series. Bye bye.